Hello class of 2022, this is Mr. Gerdes coming to you today from the guidance office at Fairmont High School. Here in the next 10 to 15 minutes, I'm going to take you through the registration process of the courses that you will need to take next fall as a Fairmont High School junior. We'll be logging this presentation out and sending it out, excuse me, logging it in and sending it out um, to you as students and to parents in the class of 2022. Again, I'm going to move relatively quickly today, but here in the next couple weeks, we will work in your advisory groups to get you to register online remotely for classes next fall. So here we go. The first, the first slide you'll see is actually the graduation policy for your class. Um, we are going to walk you through here in the next few minutes the required courses that you'll need to take at Fairmont High School as a junior, but this also is a very good link for you to reference the courses that you've taken in your previous years, including this year, and then the courses that will also come up as a high school senior. The registration form, I am going to take a moment and, and click, on, click on this link. Uh, this form will look relatively familiar to you. It just changes each year. Uh, this is the actual courses that you can take as a Fairmont High School junior. And again, I will walk you through the required courses here in a moment. Uh, just as a quick reminder, all of the courses that are available are titled by department. So obviously there's English, PE and Health, and Agriculture, just for an example. When we actually do the online registration, the numbers and letters that you see in front of each course will be the numbers that will program into Skyward. So for example, you're going to see English 11 here two times on your registration form. As a reminder, the reason why you see it twice is the one section, English 133 in this case, is for first semester, and then English 233 is for second semester. So if you see a course listed twice on your registration form, that will tell you, obviously, as a student, that you will take that course for a full year or both semesters. The first requirement, and it happens to be English, that we'll touch on today as a high school junior, you will actually choose one of these two courses. English 11, which is a standards-based um, high school level English course, English 133 and ENG 233. Or I would say, generally speaking, if you have a C or higher in your current English 10 class, Honors English 11 would be English 125 and English 225 would be a course for you to consider. So in short, all 11th graders will take either English 11 or Honors English 11 for the next school year. Under Social Studies, you do now have another choice here for your Social Studies requirement. It is World History. If World History maybe is not a strong suit or Social Studies is not a strong suit for you, we have a World History High School level course, um, SOC 133 and 233. And then if you're probably an average or above average student in your American History course right now, you enjoy history, we have an advanced placement, AP Honors World History College in the schools, and we'll touch on those requirements here shortly, um, SOC 155 and 255. So again, all 11th graders will choose either World History or AP World History CIS to take next year. The next requirement will be in mathematics. This is where we start to divide a little bit uh, quickly here with our, with our curriculum and continue to go different directions. But I think I can walk you through this here pretty, pretty relatively quickly here today. If you're currently in advanced algebra, you're taking advanced algebra this school year this semester, you will have a choice uh, to, to complete your, your math standard next year. One of your options to meet your math requirement would be Honors Pre-Calculus, MAT 1, MAT 145 and 245. Or if you're not quite sure you're ready to handle pre-calculus to finish up the minimum math requirement next year would be Math Tech and Statistics, MAT 156 and 256. Now for those of you that might be going through the Geometry ABC in advance that Algebra ABC track. We absolutely can take care of you here next. So if you're currently taking Geometry B, Geometry B is in boy. Next year as a junior, 
you will take first semester geometry C and then sem second semester, excuse me, you'll move on to advanced algebra A. So if you're currently in geometry, B as in boy, next year your track will be geometry C and advanced algebra A. Currently, this second semester, this spring, if you're in advanced algebra A, advanced algebra A is an apple right now. Next year as a senior, or excuse me, as a junior, um, the next set of classes, as a junior, you'll move into advanced algebra B and advanced algebra C, and that will meet your minimum requirement heading into your senior year. Once again, if you're currently taking advanced algebra A, you'll move on to advanced algebra B and C next year as a junior. There may be a few of you out there that are in more of an advanced track, some ad additional courses that might be out there for you. Again, talk with your, your math instructor. Um, AP Statistics, College in the Schools would be an option. And if you're currently taking pre-calculus or honors pre-calculus, you may be ready for AP Calculus CIS next year as well. And that may be a handful of you as I'm presenting today. Our next um, requirement will be in the area of science. As high school juniors, you do have a solid option um, and more options with your choices. Basically, as a junior, you have the option to take a chemistry or a physics class. So all of you this year as sophomores are taking high school level biology or honors biology. So next year, you'll see, notice the or there, next year you can choose to do chemistry or physics. So if science maybe is not a strong suit for you, um, you have the option to take a full year of chemistry, SCI 140 and 240, or if you like to deal with more motion, force, speed, rates, those kind of things, um, that may be more on the physics side. You could take um, physics, science 150 and 250. For those of you that might be looking to pick up some college credit in our science department, in our college in the schools, you also have the option, and you're probably a, a B as in boy student or above, or a strong biology student right now um, or above, you could take chemistry, college in the schools, SCI 144 and 244, and also physics, or also physics, CIS, SCI 154 and 254. We also have a possibility for you to take human anatomy and physiology, but just to tie this in a quick bow, next year as juniors, all juniors will choose either chemistry or physics, chemistry or physics at the high school or at the college in the schools level. If you're excelling in science and would like to take both, we do have that happen occasionally with students, I would say less than a handful, you do have the option to take two different science classes, but very typically students in their junior year will choose either chemistry or physics to continue forward with their science requirement. Next is PE and health. Most all of you have done PE in grade nine. My recommendation for you as a guidance counselor and going into your junior year is if you have not done so already, to go ahead and complete Health 330, PEH 330. Get that done as, your, as a junior because that would create a space heading into your senior year to take another elective. You absolutely can wait until your senior year to take your health requirement. Uh, but sometime, if you haven't done so already, in the next two years, your junior or your senior year, you will have one semester or half a year of health to complete. Again, a quick reminder with our fine arts requirement, if you've been in band, choir, or orchestra, or combination of those starting in grade 9 for one year, that will meet the two minimum credits for your fine arts requirement. For those of you that are not in band, choir, or orchestra, you will need to take two art classes, any of our courses under our art department or in our art department from starting in grades 9 to 12. Again, two art courses. 
This may not touch everyone, but if you have not taken an art class yet, uh, either your ninth or right now as a 10th grader, I'm strongly recommending that you take at least one art class heading into your junior year. Again, two art classes or music classes are required uh, for your Fairmont High School diploma. Under in Career and Technology, Technology and Careers, one class is required either in computer applications or any class down in the Ag Academy with Ms. Seibert, our business curriculum, career and tech ed, or family and consumer science. So one class, just one, a minimum one, you absolutely can take more in either agriculture, business, CT, or facts. And if you've taken one class in any of those areas since ninth grade, you have already met that requirement. In terms of electives, um, those classes build automatically. There are additional 13 um, credits of electives that are required for your Fairmont High School diploma. So all of the courses that you've taken during ninth grade above the minimum requirement, uh, just to let you be rest assured here, do count as elective, elective courses towards the 45 minimum. I have included the course online handbook. I am going to take just a few moments uh, to pull that up. You'll notice the courses will, will as you pull them up, will come up um, by department. Under agriculture is the first one with Ms. Seibert. You'll see the name of the course. This one happens to be exploring, exploring agriculture, excuse me. Um, it's available for ninth and 10th grader. You'll get the length of the course. It's one semester. If you see two semesters, obviously that's an indicator that it'll be a full year. Um, one credit per semester. Prerequisite, just as a reminder, a prereq is a course that needs to be taken before you may, may take the course that's on display. So for um, exploring agriculture, there is no prerequisite other than being in ninth and 10th grade. And then our faculty have done an outstanding job in about a paragraph of defining for you relatively quickly what you're going to do in that course. It is a very solid resource both for students and parents uh, to, to get some more ideas about what you will do on a particular course. If you're interested in college and the school's courses as a high school junior, you have to hit one of these criteria for Minnesota West. So these are actual requirements that the college, and for us we work with Minnesota West, that you have to hit. You need Typically, you need to be in the top one-third or top 33% of your class academically. You'll see that on the class rank. You only need to have an ACT comp composite score of 24 or higher, so a 24 ACT composite or higher. We also will administer the AccuPlacer test at some point in time. Again, this is obviously a very unique situation worldwide, so we will work through these requirements moving forward. Um, for you, an AccuPlacer test score in, in, in reading of 78 or 21 or higher on the reading ACT, and I know there, there's been some barriers in that happening. And then also for the math level courses, a 51 or higher on the AccuPlacer in elementary algebra or 40 or higher um, in the college level math or 15, higher on, 15 or higher in the ACT. So I know many of you have not taken the ACT right now. Um, we will be working with Minnesota West with their CIS requirements moving forward again just because of the dr drastic and dramatic nature of our current world situation. But we want to have as many students that are interested qualify to take CIS courses for free college credit um, from the high school if possible. We would like you to join Remind in the class of 2022. Uh, I peaked very recently. We had 63 members. It's very easy. You just simply text 81010 uh, under, the, in, under the message. Make sure you use the at symbol first. The at symbol first, at 2, B as in boy, B as in boy, E as in Edward, 3, E. And Mrs. Schwieger and I and us from the Guidance Counselor, the Gu Guidance Counseling Office will send you uh, requirements out very quickly as they come for, forward. Honors Flex. As a high school junior, uh, you need to abide by the Minnesota High School League rules, follow school policies for behavior, attitude, work completion in your courses, and citizenship. Typically, you need to have a 3.0 
B as in boy average or higher for honors flex. Um, students in grades 10 through 12 may apply. If you don't quite have a 3.0, but you've been working very diligently in your classrooms, you've had little to no discipline referrals, um, we absolutely, the office absolutely takes that into consideration. So if you would happen to be below the 3.0 GPA, grade point average threshold, um, we still encourage you to apply. And yes, we've had students that have earned an honors flex that have been slightly below that criteria. So something to be mindful for. I'm not going to spend a lot of P uh, time talking about PSEO classes outside of Fairmont High School today. I have included a link. We are going to have each student register as if they're going to be full-time students at Fairmont High School next year. If you're interested in applying to PSEO and learning more about it, I have included a link there. Um, here in your advisory groups, we are going to uh, do registration uh, for courses online. Uh, and we'll make that happen through Zoom. It's a reminder that all students will take 12 courses, sign up for 12 classes minimum, with a study hall each semester or an honors flex, and we'll also choose four alternate courses. So a minimum of 12 credits um, will be required for each of our students to sign up for classes next year. This is not new by any stretch of the imagination. If you would be a few of the students, and we have a a handful of students that choose to do this. They don't um, use a study hall and would rather continue with their academic learning. The most possible credits that you can sign up for will be 14. So 12 credits minimum, 14 maximum, and then we'll also have you choose four alternate courses as backups. We want you to talk to your parents here in in this week we will do registration online during zoom sessions with your advisory groups may 4th 5th and 6th that that will be coming out uh, shortly here after i get done recording this presentation if you have questions about placements this is a big a big one please consult with your teacher and ask them what they would recommend for your placements especially in biology or honors biology especially in your math courses, um, wherever cor whatever course you may be taking as well. Same thing would apply for your American history or a push course in terms of world history versus world history college in the schools next year. Email, contact your teachers. They will absolutely advise, advise you in terms of what they think the best placement for you going forward will be. And of course, Ms. Mr. Gertis and Mrs. Schweiger will be available. There's our email address. We absolutely are Fairmont Strong. Again, I appreciate you listening today. I have kept it right around 15 minutes. Hang in there, and hopefully we will be back together here in the very near future. Have a great day.